This is curry powder. It's one of the most popular spice blends in the world, and it comes in many variants across different countries. You might think that curry powder is an Indian thing, but the truth is, curry powder is a Western invention. And to be more accurate, it was invented by the British. And what's even more exciting is that curry powder wasn't satisfied with just being in the UK. It traveled around the world to Japan, Jamaica, South Africa, and beyond, adopting different spice blends, shapes, and formats that have captured the taste buds of people from all over the world. Why was curry powder invented in the UK? How did it spread to so many countries? And why has curry powder become so popular worldwide? But first, let's step back to talk about what exactly is curry powder and how it was invented. Curry powder is a mixture of spices and herbs that adds an array of flavors and spice cake to your meal, with the original goal to imitate the Indian curry flavors. It is pretty hard to define curry powder because different brands, whether from the same or different countries, contain varying blends of dry herbs and spices. I'm currently at Whole Foods, and this is actually the curry powder I got when I was in college. I literally put it on every meal I could when I was at home. So this is actually a yellow powder because the turmeric it has. And it also has coriander, cumin, quite a lot of spices, basically covering all the essential spices that people in India use to prepare curry. Okay, let's check out another one here. This one looks like it has some spices that the previous one doesn't have. Just by looking at the ingredients, this one seems to provide more heat than the other one. Whereas the other one is more flavorful and aromatic because of the combination of spices that provide warmth, earthiness, and a hint of sweetness. If you visit India, the chance of encountering this type of curry powders are low. I've created a video talking about various types of curry found across the subcontinent, how curry is made, and what spices they use. So check it out if you want to know more. People in the Indian subcontinent have been making curry for 4,000 years, but they don't use curry powder. They made their curry paste from scratch using fresh spices, and there are good reasons behind it. Fresh spices tend to have intense flavor and vibrant aroma, adding a unique texture and imparting strong flavors to the dish. Spices also take different lengths of time to release their flavors, so simply blending and grinding them into powder doesn't do them justice. Although the term curry and curry powder oversimplifies the cuisine itself, it actually has made curry more accessible to different households, making it popular worldwide. The first known curry recipe in English was published in 1747, during the time when the British were slowly taking over India. Thousands of men and women spent time in India, and the majority of them adopted the local lifestyle. When they eventually returned home to Britain, they not only brought back the wealth and fortune, but also their love for Indian food. Those who could afford it brought home cooks from India, and those who couldn't get a coffee house where Indian cuisine was served. For those who had lived in India before, they knew well that Indian cuisine wasn't just about curry. But for those who hadn't, they quickly associated curry with Indian spices, making it a symbolic image of Indian cuisine. Initially, the British palate was not used to Indian spices and authentic curry, so early curry recipes were more like gently spiced meat stews, which were quite different from the curry served in India. During this time, British cooks and entrepreneurs spotted opportunities and began experimenting with spice blends that served different palates. By the end of the 18th century, ready mixed curry powder was being sold. In the early 19th century, a well known British food manufacturer called Cross Blackwell introduced their commercial curry powder, making it widely available in British grocery stores. By the mid 19th century, several best selling books of the time contained an abundance of curry recipes that call for curry powder. And since then, curry powder has been well stocked in the British kitchens across all social classes. While Indians didn't have this type of curry powder, pre prepared spice mixes aren't unfamiliar to people in the subcontinent. Garam masala has been used in the subcontinent long before the British arrived. Masala isn't an unfamiliar word to us all. Masala chai, chicken tikka masala. But I always wonder what is this garam masala here and the differences between this spice mix and curry powder. Garam means hot or warm and masala means spice blend. So garam masala literally means warm spice blend. If you look at the ingredients here, you see those warm spices like cardamom, cinnamon, cumin, black pepper, coriander. And if you look at the color, it is brown and darker, whereas the curry powder is yellow due to the turmeric. Another difference is that garam masala is added at the end of the cooking process for the final touch, whereas curry powder is added in the middle of the cooking process for flavors and aroma. The Brits might have encountered garam masala while they lived in India, and it might have in some way inspired the invention of the curry powder. 
Although the curry made using curry powder has little in common with its Indian roots, you just can't deny how handy and convenient this little bottle is. Curry powder laid the fellow British colonial influence around the world and was brought to another part of the British Empire and beyond. One example is Japanese curry. Despite Japan not being colonized by Britain or having a colonial connection with India, it has become one of the most popular dishes in the country and is loved nationwide. During the Meiji era from 1868 to 1912, Japan opened its door to the world, embracing Western culture and technology in order to modernize. It was during this time that British merchant ships arrived and introduced a wide range of new food, including curry powder. By then, Indian curry has been a fashionable thing among wealthy and middle class, but curry has quickly found its place not only in fancy restaurants, but also in canteens. A good thing about curry powder is that it makes it easier and cheaper to prepare large quantities of food. You can simply pour this powder into dishes without measuring and mixing multiple spices, which saves money and time. So the Japanese army quickly adopted curry, paired with rice and beef, to feed the troops with the hope to make them stronger. This came under the background that the Meiji government aimed for the adoption of Western food culture and encouraged Japanese people to eat meat. The lack of connection with Indian roots has actually become an advantage of curry's development in Japan. All these creative ideas by local chefs and cooks about curry didn't encounter any pushback but received a warm welcome. So there was no limit to experiments because nobody in Japan knew what exactly authentic curry should be like. The Japanese even went further and invented pre-prepared curry blocks that took curry powder to another level. All you need to do is put it in water and simmer, then boom, you have your curry sauce ready. You can add whatever meats and vegetables you want. Japanese curry is a lot milder and slightly sweeter than its Anglo-Indian and Indian counterparts. These creative Japanese chefs and cooks also combine curry with their traditional culinary dishes. Curry powder doesn't just shine in the island of East Asia. You will also find it in Pacific island countries such as Fiji, Caribbean island countries like Jamaica, and even South Africa. Since 1838, the British sent Indian laborers to its colonists in order to address labor shortage. By the late 19th century, around 1.5 million Indians were sent to British Guyana, Jamaica, and South Africa, with only a third returning to India after the slavery system ended. This by being away from home, Indians still preserved their cooking traditions, but a new environment didn't allow them to fully do so due to a lack of certain spices and ingredients. So they either substituted local ingredients and spices or bought the spices and masala mixes from traders to make their own curry. Curry quickly gained popularity among locals, and this small bottle of curry powder was passed from one island to another. Even on islands where no Indian people reside, can be found cooking curries. Curry powder is popular and magical. Whether you love it or hate it, you just can't deny that it has thrived and gained popularity across races, nations, and time. It's a textbook example of how globalization, commercialization, and colonization has built a culinary star. Why does curry powder so damn popular? Well, it's because it does taste good, and it's so versatile. It enhances flavors, imparts aroma to your meal, and it's healthy. Tamarind is known for its anti-inflammatory benefits. Food that is loved across time and space is often versatile and adaptable. The fact that you can't define curry powder demonstrates how versatile it is. But even if the product itself is good, without certain means and opportunities, it can't go far. Initially in Britain, curry was reserved for the wealthy class. But grinding it into powder and commercializing it helps spread across all social classes in the country. Also, because it's dry and easy to store and carry, it can easily be transported from country to country. There is a good reason why curry powder can successfully get commercialized. It saves time and effort as you don't need to measure and blend the herbs by yourself. In Japan, people's love for curry didn't decrease after the end of the Meiji period because of how easy it is to make a delicious meal using these curry blocks. Japan experienced an economic boost in the mid-20th century. And think about it, after the long day of work, would you rather spend an hour or 20 minutes to cook? And though curry powder is readily accessible everywhere now, I actually would recommend trying to make your own curry from scratch to appreciate the beauty of the spices and Experience the fun of creating your own curry paste by crushing and blending these spices and ingredients. It was so much fun, and the curry tasted absolutely fantastic. 
If you love my video and would like to hear more about stories behind foods and cuisine, be sure to check out my other videos, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for my next one. I hope to see you there soon.